It's a beautiful day in the middle of March and it's time to plant the second plot in our new dream garden here. On a previous video, we showed you how we plant potatoes and we did that in the first subplot. And now in this second subplot here, we're gonna plant squash and cucumbers. Now, one of the major points of emphasis of having this new dream garden was because it was gonna allow us to rotate our crops better. We could plant certain families of plants in each subplot there and it's going to allow us to rotate them around better, have a more broad crop rotation, and in the end, help reduce our pests and diseases that we have year over year. So we try to plant crops that are in the same family in the same subplot here. And so in this subplot, we're planting summer squash and we're planting cucumbers. Now, when it comes to planting cucurbits like squash or cucumbers or even watermelons, we have to remember that fungal diseases can always be a problem. Things like powdery mildew and downy mildew. Now those diseases don't always give us problems in early spring, but as we move into the warmer months into early summer and the humidity increases, especially down here in South Georgia, those fungal diseases can be a real big problem. Now one thing that's gonna feed those diseases is leaf moisture. So if we can reduce the amount of leaf moisture we have, we're gonna be a lot more successful in battling those diseases like powdery mildew and downy mildew. Now we have certain spray treatments that we can use to try to treat those diseases, things like liquid copper and like our complete disease control. Well, the number one thing we can do to reduce the powdery mildew and the downy mildew is use drip irrigation. Drip irrigation is gonna put the water there at the plant roots, not on the leaves, so it's gonna reduce that leaf moisture, it's gonna feed that plant better, and in the end, we're gonna have less diseases, healthier plants, and hopefully more bountiful harvests. So the first thing to do before planting this second subplot in my new dream garden here was to mark off our rows and lay our drip irrigation. Now these subplots are 30 by 35 feet, so they're 35 foot wide, and that worked out perfect for me to have six rows, which are five feet apart. So I'm gonna plant two rows of cucumbers and then four rows of summer squash. To lay off our rows and put down our drip irrigation, we use our tried and true FAD system. And FAD stands for furrow, amend, and drip. So we take the double wheel hoe with the plow set and we make us a furrow there, a straight line where our row is gonna be. Then we take some of our good compost that's got some chicken manure and peanut holes in it. And we kind of lightly sprinkle that into that furrow. And then we take our drip tape layer attachment, come along there and lay the drip tape in the furrow. And that's gonna cover it at the same time. So we have drip tape buried there with compost below it that's gonna give those plants plenty of nutrients. I went with a five foot row spacing because in the past, I've been bad about planting my squash rows too close together and it just kind of becomes a jungle and I'm not able to get in there easily and harvest everything without damaging or stepping on the plant. So I went with a five foot row spacing here on my squash plants. So that'll make it easier to get in there and harvest everything and give me plenty of space and room to work. So for any kind of plant that needs trellising, whether it be cucumbers, pole beans, or running butter beans, we like to use these galvanized cattle panels here. You can get these things at your local tractor supply or hardware store for about 25 bucks or 16 foot long, and they last forever. We use T-Post to support these cattle panels. We put one on the end, one in the middle, and so that worked out to be five T-Posts for this 30 foot row right here. And I used to use those little metal clips to attach the cattle panel to the T-Posts those things are kind of time consuming. So I started using zip ties and they work out so much better. Now, one more note about these cattle panels and trellis and cucumbers. I always like to plant my cucumbers on the edge of my subplots. Now the cucumbers will crawl up this trellis really nice, but they also sprawl along the ground a little bit. And if you plant them in the middle of a subplot, they're gonna end up crawling all over your other plants. So we like to put them on the ends of the garden so they can crawl out into the open space and we can even trim those vines with the lawnmower if we need to. So here in this subplot, I put my two trellises on both ends to kind of bookend the subplot. Now let's talk about what we're planting. 
So here we have four rows for summer squash and we have two rows for cucumbers. So we're gonna plant five varieties or five packets of summer squash and two varieties or two packets of cucumbers. So the first one of summer squash we're gonna plant is this variety here called Gold Prize, which is a nice hybrid variety of straight neck squash that we've grown before and we really like. And then we're gonna grow two varieties of patty pan squash. And the first one here is a variety called Sunburst, which is a yellow patty pan squash with a little green circle in the middle. And this is an All-American Selections winner. It's been a proven squash variety for us over the years, and we really like it. And then the other patty pan we're growing is this old heirloom variety called Benning's Green Tint Squash, which kind of has a lime green color to it, and it's really nice as well. Then as far as zucchini goes, We've got two varieties of zucchini here. We've got this green variety here called Spineless Beauty, which is a great producer. And this other one here, which is probably one of my favorite zucchini varieties, this yellow zucchini called Golden Delight. For the cucumbers, I usually like to plant one row of the pickling cucumbers and one row of the slicing cucumbers. And both of our cucumber varieties that we're planting are what they call gynoecious cucumbers. They are hybrid varieties that only produce female flowers. And the female flower is where the fruit comes from. So both of these varieties are extremely productive. And if you've never grown any hybrid gynoecious cucumbers, you're in for a treat. Definitely give them a try and they will blow your mind at how many cucumbers they produce. So the pickling variety we're growing is called Calypso. And then the slicing variety we're growing is called Stonewall. So as far as the end row spacing on the squash goes, we're gonna let the drip tape do the work for us. So I hooked up my filter regulator combo, hooked up my row starts on the drip tape, plugged my ends with my drip tape row ends, and then turned my water on. And that drip tape has emitters located every 12 inches along the tape. And so what I'll do is I'll just let that water run for 15, 20 minutes or so, and you'll start to see that wet spot on top of each one of those emitters. And I'll just poke a seed down there in the soil and cover it up on top of each one of those emitters located every foot along that tape. Now I realize that one foot spacing is obviously too close for squash, but planting one every foot on every emitter there ensures I'll get a good stand. And once the plants come up, I'll come in there and thin every one and usually go with a two foot spacing so the plants can grow out well. On the cucumbers, I usually won't thin those because they're gonna be growing vertically. They don't need as much space beside each plant. So I'll leave those at a one foot space. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started poking these squash and cucumber seeds in the ground. And we will see you guys on the next video.